Hello viewers, welcome back to another So Thirsty episode. As you can see, the weather today is pretty gloomy, but fret not. We're going to have a very special episode today because we're not just going to visit one restaurant. Today, we're going to visit two Hunan restaurants. One for lunch and the other for dinner. But before we head off, a little bit of information regarding Hunan cuisine. Hunan cuisine, or better known as Xiang cuisine, is one of the eight great Chinese cuisine. Well known for its hot and spicy flavours with fresh aromas and deep colours. But Hunan is also the birthplace of Mao Zedong, who is the founder of the People's Republic of China. Oh. So anyway, first off, for lunch, we'll be heading down to this restaurant that serves an extremely popular dish called Mao Zedong's pork. So without further ado, let's go. Now I'm sure everyone has eaten pork belly at least once or twice in their entire life. Well, unless you're vegan or Muslim. But there are various ways in preparing this versatile piece of heaven. And apparently there was one so beloved by Chairman Mao, Mao Zedong, that it was named after him. The thing with traditional Chinese food is that it's usually associated with some sort of medicinal properties. Like, you know, for example, if you're eating like ginseng soup, I don't know, it's supposed to boost your you know, immune system, your hormone level, I don't know. But apparently, this dish is said to be good for men's brain and women's beauty. So I guess after this meal, Q and I would probably be a lot prettier and smarter. Aside from the pork belly, we also got some stir-fried chicken and vegetables. But we'll start with the main course. You can see the garlic, the spring onions and how red. Oh my god, just look at that gravy. Watch it bubble and smoke away. I believe that this dish is best eaten with white rice, but we've got fried rice just because we're hungry and we are gourmet. Just look at that beautiful gravy coating each and every single grain of the rice. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna eat. It's a bit fatty, but I think that's the whole point of it. Whoa. Look at that fatty, jiggly goodness. Oh my god. It's a bit spicy because of the chili, but it's it's okay, it's not too spicy. Um, and I really like this because even though there's a bit of the Chinese spice, but it's not that strong, so you can still taste the meat. But I don't really dig the fat that much, so I'm not gonna, not gonna finish this. I'm not really a big fan of the fat, but I think it really pairs up well with the succulent meat, so it gives a bit of soft, bouncy texture to that rather you know tender but a bit tough meat. It's almost like char siu. The colour of the redness gives it a char siu kind of feel, but it doesn't have that burnt taste of char siu. I really like this version because the taste of the Chinese spice is not so heavy, so I can focus on the sweetness of the meat and the sauce. Oh, and the fried rice really goes well with the sauce. Mm. Now let's try the chicken and the veggie. Sorry, the lighting isn't very good because the restaurant didn't turn on their lights, but at least we have some natural daylight here. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and try the cauliflower. Hmm. It's got a very burnt um, wok hay taste. It's good. Very crunchy and a bit spicy. So those of you who can't take spice, maybe just ask the chef to tone down a little. Now I'm going to try the chicken. Even though it feels like it's little chunks of um, chicken and bones chopped up together, so there's, it's very difficult to get the meat out, but... Oh, it's a bit salty, but very strong flavour. Salty, it's salty and a bit spicy. That's all I can taste. Um, and there's a bit of ginger. But for people who don't love salty food, um, maybe just skip this dish. Okay, overall the food is not too bad, but it's a bit oily for me. And the spice is beginning to hit me. And I like to say I'm pretty good with handling the spice, but um, I think for those of you who can't handle spice, you might want to reconsider a little. 
Actually, I think the entire meal will go a lot better with white rice. We've got fried rice just because we're hungry and we are gome and we are gome. Because the chicken's a bit salty, so you know the white rice will absorb the salt. And then the Mao Zedong pork is very gravy ish, so it will go very well with the white rice. But you know, people make mistakes. I mean, luckily they gave us some chrysanthemum tea. Majority of the food is oily, fatty, and salty. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure if it's just. Uh... But, but, but. But, 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 it's a lot of food and it's very spicy, but we're not just going to end today's episode here. We're going to another restaurant after this, after we finish and digested this Jesus Christ of me. Good weather, and we've just digested the lunch that we had. And to be honest, the lunch was a bit too salty, too fatty, and too oily for me. So since we are coming to this restaurant here for dinner, and it's serving the same cuisine. I'm hoping that it's not as, I want to, I don't want to say bad, but uh, let's find a different word. Uh, let's hope that it's not as disappointing as lunch. So let's go. We are at this other place that serves another popular Hunan dish called San Xiang Hui Tou Yu. Now you don't really need to repeat after me. It's basically just catfish soup. I think cause Hunan is located very much or basically inland. That's why traditionally most of their sauce of fish comes from the river. That's why this dish is made with catfish and catfish is essentially a river fish. Yeah, I didn't expect it to be so big. And apparently most of the Xiang cuisine is served on this campfire setup kind of thing. But first, let's have a taste test of the soup, just in case it's as salty as lunch. But um, this shows promise. It's a trinity. Savory, spicy, and creamy. Now let's see how does the fish taste. Oh my god, look at that! So chunky! I'm gonna taste it. Oh. Look at how flaky it is. Mm. Flaky, fresh, and sweet. Mm. Wow. There's not a lot of bones, so it's very easy to eat. Oh my god, oh my god, look at how easily those flakes of meat just slides off the bone. Lunch was a disappointment, but dinner was awesome. Let's check with Q. Do you see how big the bowl is in comparison to Q's face? I'm gonna have this with some rice. The white rice and the soup already looks amazing. There is also one or two tofu inside this soup. It's a really big fish. I mean, just look at that chunk. Two things I love in life. Soup and fish. Oh, sorry. Make it three. And you. No. Mm, the tofu is so soft. I'm trying to taste the soup to explain to you the flavour, but it's really complex. I don't know how, but it's really very good. Um, it's so creamy. I think there's a bit of butter, but I'm not sure because Chinese cuisine usually they don't put butter. Um, and there's a bit of wine, Chinese wine taste. So, because uh, it's a bit sweet and savoury at the same time, so I think there is some. But other than that, I can only see some spring onions and a bit of coriander, a fish and tofu, but that's about it. Ladies and gentlemen, we've found the source of the magical taste, a bag of herb flavouring. That was some awesome dinner. Not really sure about the lunch, but dinner was good. Dinner was very good. So let's have some Lona beer. Oh, it smells of honey though. 
Mm, he's very European-ish, very malty. And a bit heavy because you can see it's very chalky. I'll let you on in a little secret. This dish, this fish, it costs 120 yuan, which is roughly 18.5 dollars only for the behemoth of this fish. And it's a quite a popular dish because every table seems to be ordering it. But anyway, let us know what you guys think about this episode and leave a comment down below if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to give it a like if you enjoyed this episode. But for now, many thanks for joining us and don't forget to subscribe and stay so thirsty. Thank you.